Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Honourable Speaker, we are gathered today to pay tribute to Mangala, who is not, a, not the run-of-the-mill politician, but a rare political personality, who during the 30-plus years in which he participated in politics in this country, has left an indelible mark as a bold and enthusiastic politician who would not run away from controversy if it happened to be conflicting with his ideals. Such a rare politician is rare indeed in the political firmament of this country. So when we rise to pay tribute to Mangala, we could talk about many of his achievements. But when thousands of people paid tribute to him, let me start with a tribute paid by no less a person than Samantha Power, the former permanent representative to the UN of the US government during the Obama administration. She says this, I was devastated by Mangala's passing and these days find myself craving his wise counsel, irrepressible mischief and rare gift for friendship. I also miss knowing that Mangala is out there hustling, refusing ever to give up on the idea that people could change for the better, that his country could realize his ideals and that the world's nations could think and act beyond their immediate self-interest. These were the words that all of us would always uh, approve and attest as a true uh, amplification of Mangala's character. Mangala was a go-to politician when there was a crisis. Mangala was a very astute strategist when it came to mobilizing people. Mangala is a person who could coin slogans to create enthusiasm among the masses. He was a kingmaker. He was never head of state or a prime minister. But he had all the hallmarks and credentials and qualities that should have even catapulted him to such positions. But when he died, the tribute that poured in from all corners of the world and every section of Sri Lankan society is replete with the honor and dignity with which he had been held. So, we are certainly when in remembering his uh, trailblazing career, I think it will, uh, I need to uh, speak of some of, some of those controversial moments in his political career. Controversial remarks that were not seen as remarks that should be made by a pragmatic politician. But he was such a rare leader that he didn't mince his words when he had to say the right thing. In the post-Easter tra tragedy, he slammed a leading religious dignitary for making controversial comments targeting Muslims when he urged true Buddhists to unite against Talibanization of the religion. His message came days after this senior religious leader attached to one of the religious chapters in the hill country. Uh, he said, the Muslims were destroying the country and called for their stoning and a boycott of Muslim-run shops and businesses. Mangala tweeted, True Buddhists must unite now against the Talibanization of our great philosophy of peace and love of all beings. No Buddhist can condone a statement to stone another human being to death. 
even if it emanates from the robed orders this was what this was mangala this was true mangala this was his courage of conviction and he comes from matara we are only less than 2% are muslims he didn't say this to please the voters he didn't pay, say, say this to please or rather uh, swell his vote bank but this was mangala his commitment so uh, that he was not as a minister now i think he was somebody who achieved much in every portfolio he held as a telecommunication minister he introduced telecom reforms the first ppp project in this country he introduced the first regulator of a public utility the telecom the trc that paved the way for port reform port sector reform when he became ports minister he carried on from where he left in the telecom industry then he when he became foreign minister his achievements are many but then i was very sorry to hear the current foreign minister today quiet against tradition sure. while speaking in a, a condolence motion criticized mangala's uh, uh, attempt to introduce the resolution 31 30 stroke 1 saying that it exposed our armed forces to uh, dangers but i was i i must hear quote uh, from the tribute by one of our celebrated uh, celebrated uh, diplomats uh, in the country prasad karyavasam in his tribute to mangala he refers to this particular matter i must read this because otherwise no justice would be served to a person of mangala's caliber now he says this prasad say this in a tribute this approach was aimed at bringing all action on alleged rights violations in sri lanka away and out of geneva and new york to be handled exclusively on sri lankan soil it was expected that this locally designed inclusive approach would not only revive international recognition for sri lanka's judiciary but would create internationally recognized truth seeking platforms and evidence to vindicate all those wrongly accused and provide appropriate redress to those wronged during conflict in sri lanka this approach would have also restored the reputation of sri lankan security forces internationally opening up opportunities for further international engagement such as un peacekeeping assignments the reputation of the institutions of the army navy and the air force that had been tarnished internationally allegedly as institutions that do not credibly investigate allegations would have been restored through this process this is said by uh, no less than a person uh, of the caliber of prasad karyavasam who was a former permanent representative of the un and who held even the post of secretary foreign ministry of this country so this is in defense of mangala when our current foreign minister unfortunately in a condolence motion said that uh, he let down the security forces in moving uh, resolution 30 stroke 1 and having said that uh, mr speaker may i also uh, say this mangala was a person who was not look duplicitous he was never a man uh, who would say who would uh, run away from the reality now there was a time when people made disparaging statements on political platforms about sexual minorities now people of sexual orientation uh, were being targeted 
by insensitive homophobic comments made on political platforms. To this, Mangala responded proudly uh, and very correctly, saying that uh, I would uh, quote what he said. Uh, uh, yes. Now, he said this. Yes, I am so. I am not ashamed to accept it. I am proud of being so. Instead of being a thief, a murderer, and a fraudster. This was Mangala. There are many politicians who talk tongue-in-cheek about little realizing that they are uh, targeting uh, people with stigma and discrimination. And this, these qualities in Mangala is what endeared all of us to him. His openness, his uh, clarity of thought, his camaraderie, his wit, his humor. You enter his company, it's always full of laughter. He had an infectious ability to uh, enthrall everybody around him. So, in a, in, a, in a condolence motion, I think I would like to end with this note, that again, with uh, the comments made, uh, of course, as a finance minister, his achievements are no less uh, creditable than any other. He brought in monetary reforms, fiscal reforms, and his achievements ended up uh, in our country for the first time after 63 years recording a surplus in the primary balance uh, in our country's uh, fiscal records. So such were his achievements, tax reforms that he introduced. So he was not only a straightforward idealist politician, but he was also a very clever uh, trailblazer who changed the way uh, politics uh, existed in this country. Now I would like to uh, end with this quote uh, that is found in another tribute by one of his uh, colleagues and friends, Professor Rohan Samarajeeva, a former Director General of Telecommunications. He says this, I grieve not for him, but for us left behind. With those words, I conclude. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.